Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video and this one folks is a special one because on this video I will show you all how to destroy every single horde in the north easily and I'm talking about methods that will make it as easy as it gets so if you're one of those people who is just quite fearful of the hordes or just really wants to have some simpler methods of getting the job done this is the video to be watching, folks. Now, there are 23 hordes that reside in the north, and as well as this, there is also one very unofficial horde. I will be showing each and every one of these hordes, folks. But worth noting, I will not be showing any stealth options, basically because the hordes in the north are generally a lot smaller in size. If you are wanting to see stealth options, folks, I do have them on other videos. But on this one, it's just going to be the easiest way possible to take out these hordes. Now, I will be providing a great deal of information about each horde as they appear. A lot of this information will be on screen, and that will basically include the horde's name, the horde's size, the region in which they're located, and of course, very important, whether I'm taking them on during the day or during the night time. Because there is a lot of these locations that basically, unless you're taking them out at night, they simply won't be there. And it's also good to know, folks, that I will be showing these hordes being taken on in a very specific order, because in each region, not all of the hordes are immediately available to take on. But I will give more information on that for each and every particular horde as I get to them. So, let's get to the action, folks. Right then folks, here we go. This is the Death Train Horde. It's 50 strong. I'm taking them out during the daytime, so I know they'll always be on that train. And very important to note, this is one of three hordes that you can take on at the very beginning of the Days Gone game that reside in the Cascade region. Now in order to take out this horde, I'm basically looking to get the bike up onto this rock section. And once I'm up here, that's it folks, I'm untouchable, especially with the size of this horde. As I mentioned before, they're only 50 strong, basically because it is one of the early Days Gone uh, hordes that you will encounter. And from here, I'm looking just to get their attention. And then when they get over here, I'm going to go to town on them. You will also notice folks that uh, over the course of the first eight hordes that I show that reside in the Cascade region, I will pretty much take them all out just using the SEF-12 and I'm doing this for a very good reason um, actually doing it for two reasons folks the first is that generally this is the weapon that you will probably have available to you at the start of the Days Gone game but not only that, I like to show um, these words being taken out with these sort of weapons just to show how effective these methods are and how easy it is to do so um, at this point, this is a very quick job now indeed, in order to take them all out. In fact, just got the one left. Fantastic. And, okay. This is rather unusual, folks. I've actually got a Freaker that is stuck. <laughs> now, um, very easy to take care of. I just need to uh, open up this door and, uh, yep. Okay. I thought that was the last, it clearly is not. There is one other around here somewhere. So it's just a simple case of headhunting here, folks. This shouldn't take too long. And there's that bugger right there. Here we go, finally. Job done, but I'm sure you'll agree, folks. A very easy way to take out the Death Train Horde. Right then, the next horde I'm taking on is the White King Mind Horde. It's 50 strong. I'm basically looking to take them out during the daytime, so where I've shown on the map there, that is where they will be. And very important to know that this is one of three hordes that you can take on at the very start of the Days Gone game. And this horde is actually very close to the Death Train horde as well, so potentially you can take out two hordes very quickly. But anyways, on to the method folks, and it's uh, a very simple one. 
Uh, I'm making sure that the light is kept on here because I do want their attention. That's all I'm doing here. I will get one or two kills with the SAF-12, but the whole purpose of going in there is just to make sure that I get all their numbers coming out and chasing me. And I'm basically looking to take them to this section right here. Just a quick jump over the fence line there, get onto this rock section, take the time now to reload, and that is it. From here, folks, I am untouchable. So this job at this point will be a very easy one indeed. And another huge advantage that you get from taking out the horde in this way is basically that you don't need to use any resources like uh, pipe bombs, molotovs, grenades. You can basically save all these items that at the very start of the game are hard to come by. And there we go folks, that is a White King Mine Horde. Done and dusted. Right folks, on to the last of the three hordes that you can take on at the beginning of the Days Gone game in the Cascade region. And this is the Proxy Falls Horde. It's 50 strong. Um, basically, how I'm going to take out this horde is um, slightly more difficult than some of the others. And this is purely because of the location that I'm looking to get to. I'm just wanting the horde's attention from here. I'm just looking to head over that, uh, that tree trunk. And then I'm looking to stand in that specific spot right there. And basically, once I'm here, I am pretty much untouchable. The only thing that I am doing, I'm just being ultra cautious because I have seen, very rarely, it doesn't happen very often, but I have seen on one or two occasions where one of the freakers will actually try and jump over that tree section in order to get to you. So by just basically taking the time to be on guard as they're passing, you won't have that problem. I'm just being patient here. Um, the freakers that are below me are not going to be an issue. It's just making sure that you have all the numbers. And now that I have them all, the job is again a very easy one. It's also worth knowing, folks, when you're taking out the horde at night, that you can potentially get a lot more freaker ears because any of the freakers that are nearby will be attracted to all this action. So it doesn't do you any harm at all, especially at the very beginning of the game when you want as many freaky ears as possible. And that's it folks, that is the Proxy Falls Horde. All done. Right then, folks, on to the largest horde in the Cascade region that you will meet. This is the Grotto Caves Horde. It's 75 strong, I'm looking to take them out very close to their water area. And that rock face uh, that I just showed there is where I'm basically looking to attract all of the Horde to. And from there, it's a very easy job indeed to take them out. But uh, the biggest problem with this Horde, day or night, is actually finding the bastards. Because they are a nightmare. They are constantly on the move. But the location is very important. Because once I have all the numbers, and yep, there we go, I've got them. At this point, I'm looking to take them over to this rock area right here. Now, you can only get the bike up to round about there, but that's okay, that is as high as I need to be because from here, I am untouchable. And uh, just for uh, to speed uh, this up a touch, I'm actually going to use the SMP now for once. The rest of the horde in the Cascade region, I simply use the SAF as well. But uh, this horde is 75 strong, so... <laughs> I mean, yeah, speeding it up a touch is never a bad thing. Now, uh, also worth knowing about this particular horde, they are only available to take on once you have completed a mission where you basically rescue a character called Lisa. Um, personally, I like to just wait until the Lost Lake region is unlocked because then you know 100% that this horde is available to take on. But again, that's when you can actually bloody find them. Now, <laughs> at this point I've pretty much got uh, most of the numbers, but uh, there is clearly one or two uh, still remaining, because I've not got any notification yet to say that I've taken out the horde. So, it's uh, just a case of heading over here with a bike, and uh, again, the SMP9, because it's my sidearm, and then, there we go. That's it folks, the Grotto Caves Horde, done. 
Right then, folks, on to the joint smallest horde in the Cascade region. It is the Horselick Horde. It's only 25 strong. I'm basically going to take them out at night at their watering area. And worth knowing, folks, that this horde will not be available to take on until you have reached the Lost Lake region. So until you get there, folks, don't even bother looking for this horde because you won't find them. Now, I'm basically looking just to get their attention and I'm looking to take them right over to this area here. So I'm just going to climb up on the bike. The horde cannot get up to you at this spot. It basically is a fantastic location where you are untouchable and you can use the absolute worst weapons that you have in order to take up this horde. Uh, despite the fact it's only 25 strong, at the very start of the game, you want to keep all your resources uh, at hand for the bigger hordes, ideally. So this is... Uh, this is a great way to take out this horde, and even if they're at their feeding ground, as opposed to their watering area, you just do the exact same thing. You head over to the feeding ground, get their attention with a little bit of gunplay, and bring them over to this area here. And that's it. That's the horse lake horde done and dusted. Right, on to the other horde that is also 25 strong. It is the O'Leary Mountain Horde. I'm going to take them on during the day, and like the Horse Lake Horde, this horde will not be available to take on until you have unlocked the Lost Lake region. Now, the method for taking this lot out is simple. It's during the day, I'm just going to hit them hard in the cave. I'm using a pipe bomb because I don't want to waste a grenade, because grenades will kill 30. I know there's only 25, so the pipe bomb will take care of the vast majority of them, and then just a bit of gunplay, and that's it. Job done. Right then folks, on to the Little Bear Lake Horde. This is only 30 strong. Uh, they basically reside in this area here. Basically a wee shack at the bottom of uh, this section. And I'm looking to take them out during the daytime because they will definitely be in this wee shack. And uh, for this horde, I most definitely am going to be using a grenade. Because they are 30 strong, it is perfect. The grenade will go in and that will be it. It will be job done. You can take them on with gunplay if you wish, but why bother? <laughs> when you can take them out as hassle-free as this, it's worth using a grenade. There we go. Good night, Horde. <laughs> on to the next one, folks. Right then, on to the last Horde that I have not shown yet in the Cascade region, and this is the Cascade Highway Horde. It is 50 strong. I'm going to be taking them out at night, uh, basically beside their feeding area. And also, like the previous three hordes, this horde will not be available to take on until you have unlocked the Lost Lake region. So just bear that in mind if you're wanting to take on this horde. But this is how you do it, folks. Head up to this area here. You can take your time at this point. I'm basically just looking to get onto this section and then work my way right down to the very bottom. I'm going to be very disrespectful here and uh, stand on these uh, bags, which I really shouldn't, but uh, it's the perfect spot where you know that you're going to get the horde's entire attention and they simply cannot touch you. You are untouchable here. So, this 50 strong horde is going to be very light work indeed. As has the entire Cascade region of horse, to be quite honest, folks. But uh, yeah, I'm just using the SAF-12. And this won't take long. As always, because you're so close to the horde, your gun will do better damage than normal. It's only when you start going mid-range to long shots that this thing becomes an absolute joke. And not in a good way. <laughs> but there we go, folks. That's the Cascade Highway Horde done, and that is the Cascade Region done. Okay, on to the Belknap Region. Right then folks, like the previous region, I'm going to show these hordes in the order that you are likely to be able to take them on. And this is one of four hordes that you can take on in the Belknap region as soon as you start the Days Gone game. It's the Lava Arch Horde, it's 50 strong, and I'm taking them out during the daytime. So basically I'm looking to just attract their attention from their cave area here, and then I'm going to take them to a very specific location where I'll uh, basically finish the job. I'm actually going to take the time to use the SMP9 here, a bit more effective uh, than the SAF-12 and 
does a very good job in taking out any of the hordes, but uh, you only require to kill four hordes in order to get your hands on an SMP9 very early, folks. If you're not sure of how to get that done safely, I have a video that shows exactly how to do this, folks. But basically, right now, I'm looking just to get this horde down to this section here. I've jumped over the fence line, and when you're here, you are pretty much untouchable. And that's it. Lava Arch Horde, done and dusted. On to the next. Right then, folks, on to the second of the four hordes that are available to take on at the start of the Days Gone game in the Belknap region. It's the Shadow Lake Horde. They are 50 strong, and I'm looking to take them out at their night feeding area. And because in this particular spot they do tend to spread out quite a bit, I'm looking to get their attention using the bike. It's just a safer option. I could get off the bike and uh, start a fair old bit of gunfire, but given that the horde is really well spread out at this uh, particular location, the bike is just the, the smarter option. I'm not guaranteeing you're going to get every single one of their numbers uh, over here, but you will get the vast majority of them. So, yep, I've had a quick look safely just to make sure that uh, I've got the numbers and I have. So from here, this is how the method works. I'm just looking to use a normal attractor it's quite literally just to buy me some time in order to get up this area and then when I'm at the top here this very spot right here I'm just going to do a dive roll it just gets you nicely onto that section and from here just down the rock face get me to about there and then that's it it is a very easy job from here because uh, it's another untouchable spot folks I could use the SEF 12 but what the heck the SMP9, I've got it, so I'm going to use it. It's a much faster firing weapon, and uh, truth be told, once you have this bad boy, all the hordes are in trouble. Doesn't matter how large they are. So, I'm just staying at this spot until I have no more takers. And yet, yeah, now I'm just basically heading down to get the last of them. So, just head hunting here right now, and this shouldn't take too long. Not all of these freakers will be part of this horde. It is night time, so you do get quite a lot of uh, freakers um, around that night. And there we go, folks. That is the Shadow Lake horde taken care of, and very easily. Right then, on to the Twin Craters horde. This horde, folks, is 50 strong. They reside in the Belknap region, as all of these ones now do, and I am taking them out at their night water area. Now, for this method, I highly recommend that you use an SMP9 um, or any fast firing weapon. The SAF 12 will um, possibly give you problems here, just basically due to the fact that once they see you and they start heading to your position, yeah, you can't be got at uh, basically from um, the bottom section because you're high enough up, but they can start to overrun uh, the spot that you're at here basically with their World War Z style tactics, so you really need to have a weapon that can keep them under control this way. Otherwise, you can be got at, but uh, basically, if you do have a fast fan weapon, and the SMP9 is the weapon for the job here. Um, this job becomes a fairly simple one. I've actually run out of ammo enough for the SMP9, so it's going to have to be the SAF-12. But this is okay. The numbers now are significantly smaller, so they're not going to be anywhere near the sort of problems that you'll get um, at the very start when the numbers are just uh, piling on over to you. The only problem I'm actually having now is because all the, the Freakers have piled up around this spot that uh, I'm struggling to do damage to the rest of the Freakers, so I'm, I'm just looking for wee spots that I can uh, get shots off here now. But there we go. <laughs> and that is it, that is the Twin Craters Horde. Done and dusted. Right then folks, on to the largest horde in the Belknap region, and it is the Pat Jens Lakes Horde. It is 100 strong, 
I'm basically going to take them out close to where their watering area is. And this horde is the last of four hordes that you can take on right at the very start of the Days Gone game. Now, I was going to show a method where I take them out up at their feeding ground, which is very near uh, a Nero site. Um, but I've decided to show this one because once I discovered this, I thought this has to be the one to show you because it's simply better as it is, a lot safer and a lot quicker to execute. Once I've got their attention, I'm just looking to head them up this roadway, get to this rock area here. You can either use the accelerator or actually just walk up the, the rock face, basically, um, by uh, using the up on the, the left joystick. From here, just make sure you've got your SMP9. Even if you don't, the SAF-12 will still do the job, but uh, given that it's 100 strong, you can just go to town on them right here. And this will be quick. And this is why I've basically chose this method to show folks, because it, it really it just ticks all the boxes. And there we go, Pat Jen's Lake Sword. <laughs> That's an easy way to take them out, folks. Right then, on to the Bear Creek Hot Springs Horde. This is also located in the Belknap region. It is a 50 strong horde. I'm going to take them out during the daytime. And it's worth noting, folks, that this horde is not available to take on until you have unlocked the Lost Lake region. So if you go looking for them before you've reached the Lost Lake region, you simply will not find them. Now, this is the method, folks, and this is just all about intelligence and a bit of guile. I'm basically looking to park the bike there, and because of the horde's size, they basically won't be able to get past it. But this is how it'll all play out. I'm looking to start off with uh, the SAF-12 because they reside in the cave here so you might as well get off a few nice easy shots but only as much as it's safe to do so. I'm purposefully starting with the SAF-12 because I want to keep the SMP-9 for when I get down to the bike. So I'm heading over here but at this point I'm stopping. I just want to make sure that I've got all the numbers heading over and that they've all seen me. That is important because once they have, then this job's a nice easy one. Head to this spot here, jump over, and from there, just make sure you position yourself behind the bike. And from here, just go head hunting. The numbers mean that they will not be able to get past the bike, and because you're basically behind the bike, they're automatically coming over to it as opposed to trying to get over the other obstacle. And it makes this world an exceptionally easy one. And that is the Bear Creek Hot Springs Horde, done and dusted. Okay, the next horde is the Belknap Crater Horde. Again, like the previous horde, this horde is only available to take on once you have unlocked the Lost Lake region. It's 50 strong, and I'm basically going to take them out at their night feeding area. And folks, they don't get much easier than this one. I'm basically just using uh, the bike here to get up onto the top of this rock area. Head down to that spot there. Just grab their attention with a little bit of gunplay. And that's pretty much it, folks. This one's going to be done in about the next 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, shit, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, basically just looking to go to town on them now with the SMP now. And there we go, folks. Belknap Crater Horde. Nice and easy. Done and dusted. Right now, folks, on to one of the most bizarre hordes in the entire game. Now, this is the Marion Forks Horde. It resides in the Belknap region. It's only 50 strong, and I'm taking them out at their night water location. Very important to know this, folks, because this is the most bizarre horde I have encountered in the entire game. And you're about to see why, because everybody's going to be thinking, OK, what is the method? What is the catch? What is the special way in taking out this horde? That makes it so easy and basically in a nutshell folks it's simply their location now i don't know if there's something in the water or what the fuck but this horde just don't seem interested at all in actually engaging you and if they do it's in very small numbers we'll get one or two from time to time that take a run at you but in general they do nothing and yeah that's just one stubborn motherfucker but uh, 
This is just very unusual horde behaviour. And trust me when I say this folks, I have taken on this horde quite a few times from this area and I get the same reaction every time. Uh, pretty much very little. <laughs> so it really is just a case of a nice cleanup job. I'm looking for anything that's moving here, just taking the time to pick them off nicely with the SMP9. And this horde is not going to be long at all in getting uh, taken out folks. And without having to use any of your hard-earned resources either, so yeah. There is no other horde in the game that I know that is like that, folks, for a particular location. But there you go. Marine Forks horde, done. Right now, folks, I have now taken out the seven official Belknap region hordes. But there is also one very unofficial horde, and it resides very close to the Belknap Caves ambush camp. I've marked it on the map there, that's basically where you need to go to take out this horde if you wish to do so. Now, a couple of things to point out. I'm going to show first of all how many free careers I actually have at the moment. I have nine. You will see that change to 34 after I've taken out this horde. Uh, but before I actually get to the horde, just watch out, there is a good number of bear traps. And these things not only will do you quite a bit of damage, but they will alert the camp up above as to your position. But uh, to take out this hold, I'm just going to use a grenade, nice and simple, because I know it's 25 strong. And then I'll have the gun at the ready, just in case any of them manage to get out, but in this case, not an issue. But I can't stress this strongly enough, folks. If you do want to take out this hold, take the time, first of all, to actually use this hold to take out the ambush camp that is basically right above you, because they make the job a whole lot easier. As you can see, I've got 34 free careers there. And that's it, folks. That is the Belknap region, so on to the Lost Lake region. Right, folks, when you get to the Lost Lake region for the first time and unlock it, you will have four hordes that are immediately available, and this is one of them. It's the Berley Lake horde. It's 75 strong. And I'm basically going to take them out from that rock area right over there. Now, I state on the screen that it's the night feeding area where this takes place. Well, where I'm going to kill them is the night feeding area. But the horde at the moment are actually very nearby at the water location. So I'm basically just looking to head down, get their attention. This isn't a, a tall order at all, folks. It's a nice, easy job. If they're at the feeding grounds, this is even quicker but from here it's this rock area right here nice and easy to get up and then basically once I've dismounted yeah, it's just a, a nice easy kill location if we can't get to you you are untouchable you can take them out in whatever way you feel fit and uh, given they're only 75 strong and you ideally want to be uh, saving your resources gunplay is by far the, the wisest choice and of course, because you're taking them out at night, if there is any other freakers about, you'll get the extra years for them too. So there we go. Night feeding area or water feeding area, barely late cord, done. Right on to the second of the hordes in the Lost Lake region. It's the West Fur Horde. And this horde is also 75 strong, and I'm basically going to take them out during the daytime. So this kill method is very close to their uh, cave area. And uh, there's not really much to this, folks. It basically just involves using the bike, as a lot of these methods do. <laughs> and from here, just heading over to this area right here. And yep, you guessed it. This rock area is climbable with the help of the bike. And basically, once I'm off here, I am untouchable. And very bizarrely, because normally the sound of the bike will actually alert the horde. And they will come out in numbers, but on this occasion... No, it's not quite gone that way, but it's not a problem. Um, I could just use a bit of gunplay, but I'm actually going to get a flashbang into the, into the mix here just to make sure they are all fully awake and aware of where I am. And so far, this has taken a bit of time. <laughs> Very unusually. However, <laughs> here they are. So at this point, yep, they're not fully aware of where I am. But they are aware that something's going on. 
eventually they will uh, catch on to just exactly what's going on. And the beauty of this method, folks, is once they do start coming up the hill in numbers, just wait until you see the line of vision that you have with the weapon. Look at this right here. Fantastic. You can start to pick them off with headshots. Um, and eventually they will congregate over in this section here where they can be taken out nice and easy. So it's, uh, yeah, how are we doing? Yep, they're still on their way up. So just using the SMP9 just for uh, quickness. And I think that's pretty much all of them from the cave section now. So at this point I will uh, give uh, this pack here my, uh, my full attention. And this one take one because they're nicely bunched as they always are. That is as near as they can get to you. Their numbers are not large enough that they can give you any problems with a World War Z style tactics where they uh, try and basically group up on top, top of each other. So and there we go, folks. That is the West Far Horde taken care of nice and easy. On to the next. Right, now, folks. The next horde is the Wapanisha Road Horde. This horde is 75 strong. The action is going to take place uh, during the daytime, so they will be at their daytime location. And this horde is available to take on as soon as you are at the Lost Lake region. And it's worth knowing, folks, that everybody has missed a trick when it comes to this horde. But I'm going to show you an exceptionally easy way to take out this horde. And believe it or not, folks, it takes place in their cave. Yep, I am that freaking stupid that I actually go into the caves and look for areas in which I can take them out and just wait until you see this, folks. This is beautiful. Once I am here, believe it or not, they can get onto the first ledge, but they can't get onto the top. Bizarre. <laughs> what does this mean? It means an easy horde kill. That's what it fucking means, folks. <laughs> It doesn't get much easier than this. They will scramble about, they will move, they will jump up there, they will go down there. Uh, but basically they are just bunched very nicely over two sections. Even every time when they're trying to get to that ledge section as they're climbing up, you've just got a nice line of sight there. And this horde is not going to take long, folks. Of all the easy options there are for taking out these hordes, this is by far one of the most bizarre. But there we go, folks. Delighted to be able to show you all that one. The Wapanisha Road Horde, taken out from inside their own cave. Right then folks, on to the fourth horde that is available to take on as soon as you reach Lost Lake. And it is the granddaddy of them all. Yes, it is the Sawmill Horde. It's 500 strong. I'm choosing to take them out during the daytime. Um, you can take them out at night if you wish. Um, I just prefer the day because you're going to get less in the way of extra freakers to contend with because let's be honest 500 of these buggers is more than enough to contend with so they're currently in this section at the moment so that's no problem all i'm looking to do is to get their attention and then from here i'm going to take them to um one of two spots that i'm going to show because i'll be perfectly honest folks i could have shown any number of methods for this particular horde in fact i've got pretty much a top 10 of easy ways in order to take out this horde so this uh, particular run where I'm going to take out this entire horde will involve this location here and another which I highly recommend. Now <laughs> yeah you do have a degree of control over the horde as well when they're actually approaching this section but what you will generally find is you will get a good number that will congregate below you but you'll get quite a number of them as well that uh, hang about this particular section at the top which uh, makes it uh, fantastic for gunplay here and uh, that's precisely what I, uh, I'm going to do. Now one or two very important things to point out and uh, the first is very relevant to what I'm throwing right now. I am using Nepal Molotovs here because I'm just going to make the job a little bit quicker but if you're taking on this horn as soon as you reach Lost Lake you will not have the luxury of these bad boys. But, I can't stress this enough, if you do have any resources like grenades, pipe bombs, normal molotovs, use them. I am forever saying that uh, to hold on to your resources, but let's be honest, you're holding on to your resources for the largest hordes, and they don't get any larger than this one folks, so just go to town with whatever you have. You can basically restock up with other um, items as the game goes on. 
But for myself here, I'm just using uh, gunplay at the moment for anything purposes because uh, there's nothing uh, more fun than just uh, watching the computers line up just for you to take them out nice and easy. Uh, no. Um, I'm also using an RPD here, which again, this is a weapon that you will probably not have access to when you first arrive at Lost Lake, but I'm pretty sure you can't get this one until you uh, head to the south. But obviously, if you're taking out this horde when you are supposed to in the game, then yes, you will have access to Napalm Molotovs, the RPD, you'll probably have a Chicago Chopper some fantastic weapons like that so it will be a very easy affair indeed but uh, back to the matter in hand and uh, that is the first wave taken care of I will have to go down to get the rest of them but wait a minute I can hear something coming okay I think there's gonna be a few more here folks Survival vision is very handy, and yes, here they come. There is a few more that uh, are a little bit late to the party, but uh, not a problem. I've got uh, plenty of ammunition here, so <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, just checking to see how many are actually congregating down below me, but there is uh, virtually none of them, and uh, I could move them over, but uh, I'm just going to take the time to uh, go with a bit more gunplay here when I basically uh, leave this uh, ledge area and go to get the last of the horde and take them to the second, uh, pardon me, the second area that I'm going to take them to, then yeah, I'm definitely going to go uh, to town with uh, the resources side of things. I'm really going to clean up the rest of them quite quickly. But uh, there we go. Finally, that is the first wave taken care of. So just need to get back on the bike, head on over, and what I have left actually shouldn't be that much. I would say I've easily taken out about uh, 300 to 350 of them. So let's see what we're looking at over here. Yep, there they are. Very nice. So this won't take much to get their attention. Just a few blasts with the SMP9 here and that will get them all running. Yeah, there we go. I've got the numbers coming. So, from here, folks, this is where the second location is for uh, taking out this horde. And I have done a video on this very location um, before and quite recently. Because basically, I still consider this uh, area here to be the best of the lot. It's a nice, easy area to climb with the bike. And from here, the horde basically will start to congregate at the last place that they see you. And, of course, that is the area that I start to move up with the bike, so they are going to be sitting below me very nicely indeed. So I think it's time for some Napalm Molotovs, folks. I'm not messing up around anymore. Fuck it. They are getting their full arsenal at them now. The Napalm Molotovs, folks, will generally take out anything from 40 to 70 Freakers, depending on how solidly they're bunched. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely overkill here because the numbers are very few now, but uh, I'm just looking to polish off the last of them now very quickly. And this is not going to take long. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm hardly hearing any screaming now, so... And there we go, folks. That is the largest horde of them all. Done and dusted. Right then, folks, on to the Metolius Lava Cave Horde. Now this horde is 150 strong and I am actually going to show two methods in order to take out this horde because although I feel that the second method that I'm going to show is a tad better, I can't possibly show this horde without showing this method. And it basically involves right beside their cave area you have another cave section and it's that cave section there that I'm basically going to use to take out this entire horde. Now, it's also worth knowing, folks, that this particular horde is not available as soon as you enter the Lost Lake region. You basically have to wait until you've completed a mission with Iron Mike, where you actually see this horde for the first time. After you've completed that mission, you will be able to take on this horde, folks. 
So anyways, I'm not going to show this run in its entirety. I'm just basically showing how it gets started. Uh, and the one thing I can't recommend enough, if you're going to take up the board this way, you can make sure you've got a few decent resources that you can use or make sure that you have a couple of decent guns. Now, I have the MG45 and you will get this when you get to the Lost Lake region. So just wait until you pick up this bad boy and then take them up this way. And it's all good. But anyways folks, that is the first method, on to the next. Right then folks, as good as the first method was, I consider this one to be a tad better. It actually takes place at night, and I'm looking to entice the horde from their water area to basically that rock section right there. If they're at their feeding grounds, this is even easier. And uh, yeah, you will notice there is... Uh, a freaker's head uh, going in the uh, breeze there, which I just had to leave in for this video, folks. <laughs> uh, right, okay, on to the action. This is the method. Uh, now, as I mentioned, this is their night water area, so that's where they go to drink. If you are taking them out from where they go to feed, their feeding area is right beside that overturned uh, lorry there. But from here, I'm just looking to move them a wee touch from the water area so that I can head back to it and head to this rock area right here. And I basically want the bike up onto the top section right here. I'm going to get off very quickly and then this is very important folks. Make sure that you have a fast firing weapon when you're taking out this port here. Because if you don't, they will get in one or two slaps. But the SMP9 does a very good job because not only is it a fast firing weapon, but it is exceptionally quick to reload so you can take out this whole thing in no time folks and uh, I'm just using the Molotov just to reduce the numbers just a little bit quicker and uh, this job is going to be a very quick one indeed so for this horde folks it's really just choose your poison uh, I will be quite honest I do prefer this method as opposed to the first one because basically they are wider spread out so that you can uh, pick them off so much easier when you're taking them out with the first method that I show, basically you just have that small narrow gap and as the horde starts to pile up with the bodies, if you don't have really good weapons, it can actually start to get quite difficult to kill them. <laughs> so just bear that in mind if you're using the first method folks. But there we go, that is the Metolius Lava Cave Horde, done and dusted. On to the next. Right then folks, on to the Sherman's Camp Horde. Now this horde is 75 strong, I'm basically taking them out during the daytime, and this is one of two hordes that will not appear until you have completed a mission that involves you actually taking Boozer with you on a Nero mission. Now, here is the method. There is a fantastic location that I was made aware of, but this is not the actual area I'm going to take them out from because it's basically inside this building. The horde cannot get up to the that top section, so that is one thing. But it's a case of you now have the ground floor here, a perfect headhunting height here, and the horde can't get near you. This really is one of the easiest hordes you will ever now take out. And after seeing this method, folks, I don't think anybody else will use any other method again. Because it doesn't get any easier than this. The, the method that I was originally going to show was actually from the top of the area where I climbed uh, with the ladders, but you are at a height, uh, and when they congregate below you, you actually kind of struggle a bit. You're having to wait for them to dart out from where they are. Whereas here, not a bloody issue. There we go. How easy is that, folks? Sherman's Camp World, done. <laughs> Right then, on to the River Flow Farms Horde, folks. This horde is very similar to the Sherman's Camp Horde because you require the same mission to be completed before this horde unlocks. It's 75 strong. I'm taking them out during the daytime. And this one, again, is just super easy. It involves a bike. Now, it involves getting up the rock face this way. But there is an extra added bonus I like to add to this one and it is basically once you've got uh, onto this rock area you want to get to a very specific area on this rock section and it is down here just take your time in doing this you've got all the time in the world because the horde will not be alerted it's that rock right there 
and basically it's your line of sight that just makes this so good because look at this folks just wait until they start coming running out I'm using the SAF 12 just to get their attention at this point but once they start running I'm changing to the SMP9 I want something quick because I don't want them congregating too much by the area that I'm at right then here they come folks and I'm purposefully going to stick with the SAF 12 at the moment just to show that they will get to your position but they're struggling to do anything once they actually get there they basically stop at that section and they will eventually fall off over the, the rock face area there now I'm seeing they're coming with much uh, larger numbers that's it now I'm just stepping to the SMP9 and as you can see folks this is just another fantastic location it is so quick and easy to take them out from here yeah and I'm just purposefully not taking that one on immediately just to show just how much protection you actually have here and there we go folks river flow farms horde done and dusted just one horde left folks Right then folks, on to one of the most fun hordes in the game, and it is the Iron Butte Horde. Basically that is where they reside, I'm going to take them on during the daytime. They are 300 strong, and basically this is one of the mission hordes that you will be asked to take out near the end of the game. However, you can take them out as soon as you have unlocked the Iron Butte region. So, this is how it's going to be done folks. This is a very nice easy method and I've shown this on a previous video. Um, it only involves two attractors and basically a lot of bullets. You can use more resources if you wish but this is the easiest way to get the job done folks. Basically getting a tractor out over there now I'm throwing it over by that tanker very purposefully because uh, these tankers when you have the right numbers beside them will take out 50 freakers at a time. So already I've taken out at least 60 to 65 of the numbers given I exploded that barrel. But uh, I'm looking to get that second attractor off. Head over here, that just gives you a bit of time while the horde is heading over to uh, this position. Not even going to bother with the SMP9. The SAF-12 will do fine. Now, this is all about horde manipulation, folks. Anybody who's seen my video, the Horde Whisperer, knows exactly where I'm taking them. And this one is so good. Here they come and it's like, yeah, that's it. Over to the right, folks. Over to the right. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go to town on them with the SMP now. You can start hitting them with any uh, Molotovs if you like, or any other items. Although if you are using grenades and pipe bombs, do make sure you throw them to the other side of this pile of the horde. If, <laughs> if you throw it too near to yourself, obviously you're going to get issues, but... Now at this point I'm just looking to move them over to this section by just moving Deacon over a touch because they do respond to your movements here. It's a very, very weird area indeed. And there we go folks, that is the last of the hordes in the north taken care of. All I can say is folks, I hope this video helps a lot of people and I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I'll leave the last words to Deacon St. John. And that, my friend, is all of it. Jesus.